that was weird. <clears throat> You. Huh. Very strange. It like when I started, YouTube was like, oh yeah, live streaming is not available right now. And then it said, try again, and I started to hammer that button, of course. And uh, anyway, here we are. So hopefully you can see this. Um, seems to be the case. Everybody heard the rave music and the ad, so there's that. There we go. Let's see. We've got Kelly Audio. we got VJ Morph, Brian Griffin, Griffith, sorry. We've got Moderator Matt. Good morning from Sunny Phoenix. Um, morning from New Orleans, working on some Stormcast Eternals for Warcry. Nice. Um, let's see here. Switzerland. Berlin, Germany. Let's see here. Morning from Cloudy, Milwaukee. It's pretty sunny here right now. Good morning from Peoria, Illinois. Working on French toast casserole. That sounds good. I'm pretty sure it sounds good. Well, from Germany, sunny Wyoming, Portugal. South Yorkshire. Uh, let's see here. Is Nick wearing a fez? Yes, I put a fez on him earlier. Uh, I just was feeling saucy. Hudson, Illinois. Unfortunately, I have to attend a work meeting half through. Well, that you know, these, these into every uh, you know, uh, life, some rain must fall, whatever, something along those lines. Uh, hello from the great state of bliss. Morning from Miami, Florida. Let's see. It's always nice when I catch you live. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Just trying to get out. Just trying out the new airbrush uh, Badger Patriot Extreme varnishing with Mig Lucky Ultra Matte. Uh, do you think that kind of varnishes? I don't generally thin the varnishes that I shoot through my airbrush. Um, I've had no. I've had no issues with that. Morning from SoCal. Just finished up some Warhammer High Elves of Hedroa. Twenty years. Nice. Better late than never. Um, hello from Louisiana, putting together some models from Space Hulk. Nice. Good morning from West Bend. Good morning from Ludwig Schaffen, Germany. That's maybe close. Uh, got a bunch of Germanys right in a row there. Got Manitoba, Finland. Uh, afternoon from sunny North Cum North Northumberland. Working on my Blood Angels. Nice. Uh, can I get my Etsy Nick body pillow with a uh, fez, please? I don't even know how I would go about that. Um, Eeny Minnie's Wire. Hey, Eeny, how you doing? Why are we awake? You guys were up playing that Viking game last late last night, weren't you? I bet you were. Just picked up my new Iowa to change my life, says Chris Thompson. So um, <clears throat> today is going to be... <clears throat> excuse me. Today is going to be about, uh, a little bit, the, the subject for today. And you know how this goes. If you've been here before, I don't usually talk about the subject the whole time. It's usually a relatively short bit. Otherwise, I'm answering questions and things like that. But uh, I want to start doing some airbrush uh, videos. So I want to talk about, like, you know, I did a small series of airbrush, like, for beginners things. And I want to take a, another, another, you know, leap at that, if you will. And uh, do some, a little bit more, maybe, hands-on stuff. I get a lot of questions about that kind of thing. Those videos were more about like, you know, safety and this and that. And th I want to talk a little bit more about like, I don't want to say techniques because I don't frankly think I have a lot of technique, but I at least can show some things hopefully. And the reason partially that I can do that, I've talked about this before. The room that I do my airbrushing in is this tiny little Harry Potter room underneath the stairs in the basement. When I'm sitting in front of the little kind of counter that I've got used that I do my airbrushing on, if I stretch my arms out, I can touch both walls without much work at all. It's actually, they're, it's really small. So um, trying to get a couple of cameras in there, one like that shoots at like maybe my face and another one that shoots down at the thing I'm working on is uh, difficult. Tripods, you know, just cameras in general can be pretty big. So um, I think I've got that worked out with some uh, clamp arms that I use, kind of like the ones that I use for Twitch. 
one that hangs the camera down from the ceiling. So I'm going to have one that kind of hangs it over from maybe the ceiling or maybe over from the side. But then I also wanted to get another one that is good for me to be able to hold up and show things to you. So I just recently got this. It showed up on Friday. It's a Sony ZV-1, or for those of you overseas, ZV-1. And it is, um, it's designed kind of for vlogging. Like it's it's it, you could take normal pictures with it like stills but it's also very good for video it has a little flip out screen um you know which most things do these days but sony doesn't do that too frequently and now they are starting to because they finally got their heads out of there anyway um the big thing about this camera is that it has something called product mode so i can be it'll focus on my face sony's got really good autofocus and then i can like pick up a thing and be like hey Take a look at this. You see how this camera is not focusing on anything? Well, it's manual focus. I've got it set to manual focus so it doesn't go back and forth. But the idea is that you can go like this, show the thing that you're working on in the airbrush or whatever, and then you move it away, it goes back to your face really fast. Like that's what this has got built into it. Uh, it's a setting. So anyway, I want to start doing that. So I want to get some new topics, uh, some ideas, some questions, things that you people want to know about airbrushing. So if you could, you don't have to, but it'd be great if you could just put the word topic preferably in all caps, at the beginning of your topic suggestion for airbrushing, question about airbrushing, whatever. Then later on when I go back through the, um, whatever this thing is, um, the stream here, uh, I can pick those out a little bit easier. I, working with it this way is nice because it's like I don't have to take notes. I just go back later on through the stream. I speed it up to like two times speed or whatever. So I'm like talking like a chipmunk. Um, and then I just sort of watch it as it goes by and I pause from time to time and then, you know, type things out and whatever. So anyway... Actually, copying and pasting is a smarter idea. So that's what we got going on there. Um, let's see here. Greetings from Serbia. How you doing? Uh, hello from Canada. Even in Canada, we say that. That's true. You guys aren't overseas, technically. Uh, I was washing my airbrush and accidentally dropped the little bit that holds the needle in the sink. Ooh, that's problematic. Yeah. You kind of need that part. The um, thing with the airbrush is that you are painting with a cone that is almost invisible. Yeah, that's true. I don't try to get, personally, I don't try to get into detail at all with airbrush. I use it, initially when I first started using my airbrush, it was because I wanted to be able to prime when it was cold or rainy or humid or whatever. Or if it was just, you know, Wisconsin outside generally, then I, I wanted to still be able to prime. So um, that's why I bought the airbrush. And then eventually I was like, well, I can also do my base color, you know, like if I'm painting an ultramarine I can paint him blue too that just saves me a step it's quicker and faster and so I started doing that and then I started getting into zenithal highlighting and then even here and there I've done you know like a little bit of masking and stuff like that but I'm not like painting eyes or like okay well his sword should be silver so I'm going to paint his sword silver with my airbrush I'm not yeah I, I do most of that stuff with a regular brush where should I use my airbrush and when should I use my airbrush for speed painting nice that's a good question uh, masking sure that's a good one um, how to clean the ultrasonic cleaner. Gotcha. Getting an airbrush in two days and I'm really scared I might destroy it by using it wrong. Um, I mean, you can't really use it wrong. Um, I would tell you probably the first thing that you want to really make sure you do and, you know, it depends on how you're, maybe if you're a more visual learner, kind of like I am on certain things. Um, well, it's not that I'm a visual learner. I learn by doing, but I'm a more of a visual memory person. Um, so you may want to take pictures or use your phone to record you taking it apart. Sometimes, frankly, some airbrushes don't come with a good guide to show you how it all goes back together again once you've taken it apart. Um, you may just be inherently, you know, mechanically uh, inclined. So you'd just be like, oh, yeah, well, obviously this goes back together this way. But I've had people be like, I took it apart to clean it, and now I don't know how to get it back together again. So it's not super hard, and once you figure it out, it's second nature. But um, that's probably a good thing, you know. Buying a cheap airbrush kit, good for beginners. Honestly, I have in the basement uh, several years ago, I bought, uh, a, a, like a, I think at the time it was a $90 airbrush kit from Amazon that included a compressor. And uh, my plan was always to make a video about, you know, whether it worked or not. And I, then I just never did. So uh, it's still down there. So that's not a bad idea. <clears throat> Fixing clogs. Hmm. Well, see, if they're wooden, then, you know, you can sand them if you get, like, a ding in them. But if you sand them too deep, it gets problematic. You're not you're not talking about those kind of clogs, are you? I get it. Never mind. Um, 
Is there a hard truth slash video out there where isopropyl alcohol destroys the rubber rings and Iowa water brushes? I, I mean, I could look into it. I've never used it. I don't know why I would. Like, I literally, like, the only thing I ever use to clean my airbrush is just, like, airbrush cleaner, which is this junk I buy off of Amazon, I think. It's actually made by Iowata. Um, isopropyl alcohol. Do I even own any isopropyl alcohol? I used to, but I think I used it all. Um, and then, then all of a sudden it was the, the you know, pandemic out, out there. And uh, then you just couldn't get it very well. Uh, so I haven't bothered. Do metallic paints damage your airbrush? Mm, I don't think so, but I can look into it. Uh, episode showing how to use an airbrush from setup to spray to switching paints to cleaning. Sure, yeah, I could, I could see that. Um, what you should have on hand in the way of equipment to be on the airbrush. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Water in a squeezy bottle. That's kind of nice, actually. Paper towel, etc. Yep, no, that's a good idea. Um, let's see. Speed painting with the airbrush. For me, honestly, the thing that makes me able to speed paint is nine times out of ten just doing some sort of Zenithal highlight. So for those of you that I haven't mentioned it to before or haven't heard me talk about it, a Zenithal highlight, let's say, here's a miniature, right? So um, you prime him a color, whatever color you decided to prime. And there's lots of different reasons why you might pick one color over another, something like that. But let's say it's black. So you, you prime this guy black and you get it sprayed up and down and all the nooks and crannies. So he's you know under his armpits, in between his legs, all the different places have got black primer on him. You give him maybe five minutes to sort of set up a little bit. And while you're doing that, you're changing the color in your airbrush and you're switching over to maybe like white. And then you are going to spray just down on them. You don't want to get into all the nooks and crannies because you're going to just cover up what you did with the black. But you're just basically kind of spraying down. And maybe not straight, straight down. I mean, you would, but not just straight down. You might come at it around it from kind of a, like a 30 degree kind of cone you're spraying around. Because then the majority of the paint's hitting the top of his little head and the top of his little shoulders. But it's not getting underneath his arm or like where he's holding the axe in front of his chest. It's not getting between his legs. And then that part stays black or variations of black, depending on how much of white does kind of get on there a little bit. And then it's like he has a shadow built in. So now you have this black and white model that already has fading and shadow and highlight and all that kind of stuff on him. And then all you do is you start using transparent colors, um, washes, glazes, uh, contrast colors from Games Workshop, stuff like that. And then that can speed things up quite a bit for you because instead of having to like paint like a fade like on his back so his head is lighter than his shoulders a little bit and maybe lighter than the lower of his back and you know his tummy you just go and that's you don't have to make the noise if you don't want to but you just basically kind of you know use a transparent skin color on him or whatever it's going to be this guy's kind of gray and um it looks like you know what you're doing so yeah for me speed painting is all about using a zenithal highlight it's not always black and white sometimes uh it is black and, you know, blue. Like, if the blue is the highlight. Uh, like, if the model was going to be, again, like a space marine, let's say an ultramarine, I could see myself easily spraying everything black and then spraying almost everything blue, but keeping it, like, so that in the shadows, between the legs, behind the bolter, stuff like that, it stays darker, and then you have a shadow built in. Um, I just did a cool demon model. I posted it on Instagram last week and he was originally primed a very, very dark brown and then sprayed from above with red. And then I didn't have to do a heck of a lot to his skin. Like I literally, I threw some wash in some spots and then did a bit of a dry brush with a makeup brush to get some more highlights and then his skin was done and he was mostly skin. So that's, that sped things along quite a bit. So any chance you've used Liquitex ink metallics? I have not. The only Liquitex ink that I've used is the uh, white acrylic ink. And I used to use that for a while as my, as my top-down um, uh, white for Xenithal. And now I don't use it anymore. It's fine. It's, it's fine. But you have to mix. If you're, if you're going to be using contrast paints at all, then you have to mix matte medium with the ink before you spray it on the model because if you just spray the ink directly on the model there's something in the contrast paints that can eat the ink and that will screw up your your highlight so um what i've started using now is a uh, pro acryl uh from monument hobbies they make a they make five different airbrush primers now you can brush them on too with a regular brush but they're, they're really aimed more towards the airbrush and their white airbrush primer is actually very very nice and smooth i really like it 
So it, you don't get the general kind of dusty or speckles and things like that that you do generally get out of like regular white primers. Um, it's I, I was really impressed with it when I first started using it. So that's what I use now instead of the white ink because it's just a quicker, easier step. I don't have to mix white ink with matte medium and a little touch of flow improver. I just go and just squirt stuff out of the bottle into my cup and start spraying the white part and it works great. So yeah, the, the, the matte, or I'm sorry, the um, white primer from uh, Monument Hobbies is great. You need tips that you can also do with an airbrush. Like like dust your house or something? I'm not sure what you mean with that. Hmm. Um, watch out using IPA with many hobby paints. It can easily turn into a gummy mess. Yeah, I don't use the um, isopropyl alcohol for basically anything. Um, how to persevere through the learning curve. Vince uh, has some great videos about airbrush use, paint, change, maintenance. Yep, no, that's true. That's definitely true. Vince is uh, definitely somebody you should be, you folks should be watching. Simple, efficient airbrush workflow. Lots of videos about how to use, but the steps are very separate. Hmm. Would you consider doing a second video on 3D printing? G GW's price, uh, rising prices and the drop in cost of printers seems like the time. Um, I mean, I've been... I've been painting a lot of 3D printed stuff lately. Uh, I still don't own a 3D a resin 3D printer, but I uh, have a, a good friend of mine who does, and, uh, uh, Matt from the uh, um, Game Four podcast. You know who I work with. Uh, he's got actually a couple of resin printers now, and he's really been enjoying it. And he, uh, he gaming matter m a t t r uh, dot com on YouTube, gaming matter. Or, uh, sorry, on on the internet, gamingmatter.com. Um, and he's been um, like he's been doing a print service and stuff like that. But he's been I've been sending him some things and he's been printing them for me and everything like that. So that for these these this project I've been working on lately, uh, and because I've been finding these very cool STLs, these very cool files. And uh, so yeah, I've been enjoying painting resin stuff. I'm still not to the point yet where I want to pull the trigger and get a resin printer personally for the same reasons that I talked about in that resin printer video I made I don't know a year or two ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, eventually, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I mean, honestly, once we start to get some like, and I know a lot of the newer printers have got charcoal filters in them to help with the smell. And also a lot of people are starting to use more eco-friendly water washable resins and all that kind of junk. Plus there are now um, products, like instead of you having to figure out a way to rig up your own UV curing station, there's companies now that just sell a doohickey that you set on your desk and you put your models in there and you turn it on and UV light and it rotates around like a rotisserie chicken. Um, and that's really helpful. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's, it's something, but, uh, for right now, it's honestly, if I made a new video about that, it would either be one of two videos, potentially both one, uh, talking about working with painting, just painting resin miniatures, whether you, some you printed them or somebody else did. Uh, that's maybe something to talk about. Although, honestly, it's really not that hard. Um, if there's very little to talk about there, you just basically paint them like you do like normal miniatures, which is really nice. There's little things to look for here and there, but that's that's a, basically about it. Um, the other thing would be if I finally decided that it had gotten to the point where it was time for me to get a resin printer, I would then maybe talk about why and like what changed and that kind of stuff. I could see that. Let's see. Um, how to figure out what air pressure to use for different situations. Hmm. I don't know, frankly. Uh, I'd have to look into it. I mean, I only ever use about 15 to 20 PSI. I don't change it ever. So I don't know what different situations would be. Maybe if you used a different type of paint. Uh, but I only pretty much use acrylics as well. So that's a good question. Um, haven't taken a dive in airbrushing yet, but it's definitely something I'm considering. I mean, it's... I really enjoy it because, like I said, I live in a part of the world where there's a lot of time in the year where it just is not a good idea for me to go outside and try to prime um, or, or, you know, lots of different things, uh, varnish, all that kind of stuff. Honestly, I these days I find that airbrush varnishes are superior to anything I can get out of a rattle can. Even my old standby, uh, Tester's Dull Coat. Tester's Dull Coat used to be my jam, as the kids say, and uh, now basically many things fired through an airbrush are better. Now, I think Tester's Dull Coat did change their formula, and that's why it's not as good as it used to be. 
something about uh, probably cancer, I suspect, or some other kind of horrible, you know, it's, it changes your genes or something like that. Um, but uh, this other stuff, uh, it doesn't do that because it's, you know, it's the propellant is not an issue or whatever the deal is. So, yeah, it, that's that's a big reason to use an airbrush, too. Uh, let's see here. Uncle Adam, have you ever ordered a, or considered ordering a model from Hero Forge? Oh, yeah. No, I have. Um, I Back in the earlier days, I ordered some stuff from them. Um, and I've also used the Hero Forge service to get STL files. Um, that's another video I'm sort of slowly working on uh, is that I got... So, okay. For those of you who don't know, Hero Forge is a site you can go to where you can custom design your own miniature uh they have and they keep adding new stuff all the time so let's say you're going to be playing dungeons and dragons and you want your cleric and blah, blah blah so you have this idea in what your head what your cleric is so you pick your body type your species like oh i'm a whatever dragonborn is that a thing i don't even know i know that there's some sort of dragony sort of people in D D fifth edition but you know you have this type and then i got a robe and i have a staff and, and they have all these different things and then there's different poses that you can like pick and then relatively recently they've added a thing where you can modify the poses not completely but like there's a lot of some of the poses like you can move the arm around or the you know this or the head and all kinds of stuff um and then it makes this shape and then you can say please print that and send it to me for, uh, and it's like 35 or 40 bucks sh shipped i think at least in america but then not too long ago two years ago they made a new service where you can say give me the stl for that file and then that costs like eight or ten bucks and then you get the stl and then you can print it yourself if you already got a printer and then you don't you know so it's a whole thing um and they've gotten into now they've they did a kickstarter sometime last year where they'll be able to print in full color now and so there's a whole bunch of, it's a, a lot of stuff going on with hero forge so check it out it's sort of fun to play with um it's not something you would probably print an entire army with because again you're looking at, you know, at the very least, well, here's the thing. If you're doing a skirmish game and you already own a printer, it's not a bad plan because then you could completely customize and build yourself, let's say, eight, ten people. It's going to cost you, you know, let's say you did eight people and it's, I think it's maybe ten bucks a person uh, for the STL. So you're looking at 80 bucks, but you're getting completely custom stuff. Then you're printing it, putting on bases, whatever you want to do um, and going to town from there. So, you know, um, you know, that, that's a possibility if you're looking for real custom stuff. So it's, again, not the cheapest option, but it does give you the ability to do customization, which is very cool. I ended up with super glue on a mini's foot, crusted up. Much later, while filling gaps and gloss varnish on a dirty brush, I put some of the super glue on it and reactivated, cleaned my brush. Huh, interesting. I used an Eligar, Eligu Mars 2 Pro with water washable resin. There's almost no smell. I've been hearing good things about Elegoo. Um, uh, Matt, Gaming Matter, that I just mentioned before, he's got an Elegoo Saturn. I think that's one of the new ones that they've just recently done. He says he was very lucky to get it because it's been out of stock a lot. Um, OSL done through an airbrush. Well, honestly, that's the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Um, not everybody wants rotisserie chicken. It's a little early in the morning for rotisserie chicken for me, but you know, you do you. Um, but yeah, it, the I, I did some OSL on um, those Necrons that I did back in July, the Indominus ones, and um, yeah, using the airbrushes makes it way way easier. So yeah, that would be a good idea too. 3D printing becomes a hobby in itself, especially when you get into 3D modeling. Oh lord, 3D modeling, yeah. Um. Let's see. What was the website you mentioned where I can find or buy individual from minis? Or, oh, um, myminifactory.com is the place where you can go to buy the STLs, uh, the shapes, you know, 3D shapes. Uh, if it's a Patreon, and most Patreons will eventually, after the month is up, they will then throw most of that stuff into myminifactory.com, and then you buy them a la carte. So that's a place to go. Um, let's see. You can also thin down the paint through the airbrush with some flow improver or water to use it at the end of your paint sessions and apply filters. I like to use, um, for filters, I like to use 
generally these days I like to use contrast paint actually because you don't have to thin it down. You just dump some in, just put a couple of drops of contrast paint in there and then go to town. Um, yeah, I, I like, uh, so a filter is like most airbrush paint is opaque and as you spray it on, it covers up what's underneath it. Um, if you spray just a little tiny bit, then you, you, know, you still see some of the stuff through it. But if you spray a bit more, you'll start to cover up what you're spraying. That's the whole idea. Like if you're priming with your airbrush, you're trying to cover up the plastic. It would not be helpful if the plastic could still be shown through kind of like as a transparent color. But sometimes you want a model, you want to see the same, you, you know, you painted the model color, whatever, gray, and, and you want to now make it darker towards the bottom. Let's say it's a piece of terrain and you want to shade it down towards the bottom, like where the ground is and the mud kicks up in the rain and it gets dirtier. <clears throat> It's really easy to do that with a transparent color. So when you put you spray a contrast paint through your airbrush, it does not do what the normal contrast stuff does when you put it on with a regular brush. Um, but what it does is it just makes this transparent kind of color over the current color there, and it's known as a filter because it's like it's like a filter on a camera. Have you ever seen someone put like a filter on a camera? I want to make everything red, and you get this transparent red you know thing that just screw onto the front of the lens. It's like that kind of, except it's in whatever color you're spraying through the airbrush. So it's a, it's a good idea. Uh, let's see here. Thanks for the Etsy video. You may not claim to be the best painter, but you are the best painting hobby teacher on YouTube. Well, thank you very much. Uh, painting from the deepest part to Zenithals. Many things I've learned here. Thank you. Well, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, the, uh, the, the the Etsy video did a lot better than I thought it would, honestly. Uh, I just assumed that, like, I'm like, all right, well, you know, that's... It's this thing where I, I think sometimes a video is going to do well, and then it doesn't do well. And then there's other times I'm like, well, this video is not going to do very well, and it does well. I really thought that the video about uh, Kill Team... Or it's not, not Kill Team. The video about Warcry, where I went through the Chaos book and picked the cheapest... Like, you know, uh, for each of the different factions within Chaos, like how to get the cheapest warband and all that kind of stuff. I thought that was going to do really well, and it's gotten terrible views. I mean, it's like, it's, I don't know, a month ago almost now, and it still does, it just barely has 15,000 views, which for me right now is like, on a, on a good day, like, the Etsy video had that before I went to bed on Friday night. So it's, you know, I mean, it's, I don't know. Um so, uh, yeah, I kind of thought, you know, because, like, when you talk about, like, here's a popular game, here's the cheap way to get into it, that seems like it, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, we will uh, we will see what, uh, I got to figure out which one I'm going to do next. Am I going to do dis uh, Destruction, Death, or Order for the next one of those videos? Uh, but, I, yeah, I'll have to figure it out. Maybe I'll do a poll on Twitter or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Um, let's see. What's the best airbrush primer in your opinion? Right now, I'm a very, very big fan of basically two primers. Um, Pro Acryl stuff right now. Pro Acryls from Monument Hobbies. Like, they're, I've been very impressed with every one of the new primers that they've released. Uh, they've only got five colors currently, but they're going to be doing more. They've got a black. They've got white, which is really good. Um... They've got a like a darkish gray, I think. I think it's darkish gray. They have a color called brown black, which is a very very dark brown, and then they have like a dark military green. Those are the current four colors or five colors. Uh, they're probably going to be adding other ones as well. The other uh, line of um, airbrush primers that I'm a big fan of also is uh, Vallejo. Um, I've not been using their white anymore since the Pro Acryl, uh, but They've got a lot more colors. They've got, like, you know, bone color. They've got reds. They've got blues. They've got all kinds of different stuff for airbrush primers coming in. Sometimes bigger, you know, bottles, but even, like, the normal size bottles, too, if you're not going to be using a ton of it. Um, so, yeah, that's also a, a good brand as well. That Warcry video is super useful, but I'm just now getting into Warcry, so I'm probably a very niche target audience. I mean, maybe. It's possible. I, I, yeah, I was kind of surprised that it just didn't, didn't work out that well. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. Uh, let's see here. Does contrast paint airbrush like inks do? I don't know how ink... Well, so the only ink that I've ever fired through my airbrush has been not transparent. So no, if that's the case. 
Uh, my inks, the, the only ink that I've, like I said, used on my airbrush has been the Liquitex white acrylic ink mixed with a little bit of matte varnish and a little bit of flow improver. And I was using that for my highlight and Zenithal priming for a while. Um, and then now with, like I said, this white primer from Monument, I, I'm just using that because it's faster and easier. Um, let's see here. I've got to vote for order and for uh, destruction and for death. Okay, there you go. A video on the most expensive Warcry band would also be interesting and funny. Um, oh, no, I'm thinking of Age of Sigmar. A friend of mine was just talking to me recently about uh, basically an Age of Sigmar list that is basically Archaeon and four boxes of Varengard, which would be 12 Varengard, and be just four boxes of Varengard would be $400 because it's $100 for three dudes on horses they're very cool and they're kind of large but not i don't know if they're a hundred bucks anyway um yeah so uh yeah but that's not that's not for uh that's not for war cry um i assume evergreen video subjects end up doing better in the long run yeah, I mean, that's that's the case. I, like, a lot of the videos in the past that I've done that are a little bit more tutorial-like, including the ones with Sam, they don't necessarily have a lot of what's called velocity, meaning they don't take off right away. But over time, you know, people go into YouTube and type, how do I paint a power sword? And then eventually, they, you know, and so the, there's a long tail where you, they, they build up over time a lot more, whereas sometimes, like, the new hot flash in the pan kind of thing can get a bunch of views in the first weekend or whatever, and then pfft, kind of crap out. So, um, uh, yeah, it, you know, it, there's a lot of interesting things that, 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 that happen there. Uh, I guess a lot of people might use the Etsy video while not that many people in the hobby play Warcry. Yeah, I could see that too. I'm joining Warcry next week because of your vids. Warcry is a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Vallejo is my jam. The primers are legit. All I use now. Yeah, I've been using the, mainly them for airbrush for a long, long time. And it's just, like I said recently, that I've really liked the Proacryl stuff. Um, but the, like I said, there's more colors still in the Vallejo line. Regarding the Warcry video, it's probably one of those videos that will be kind of evergreen. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Can I reuse airbrush needles for acupuncture? I don't think so. No, that sounds like a terrible idea. Well, first of all, those the tips are very... They can be pretty delicate, so um, you're probably going to screw them up. Uh, I just got my first airbrush for my birthday yesterday. Nice. Happy birthday. Any beginner advice would be awesome. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Um, I Definitely, like, you know, I would tell you to, at, at least currently right now, I would look for some airbrush beginner videos out there, and uh, I've got some, you know, but, uh, and again, like I mentioned, c concern yourself with, understanding how it comes apart and goes back together again there's nothing worse than taking it apart than being like i don't know where this part goes i don't know what the heck and so yeah maybe video on your phone or something like that take some pictures or something like that just in case you know you're more of a visual memory person like i am than than anything else um but yeah it's uh another big thing i think is personally for keeping it clean i keep it wet I just don't ever let it dry out. When I'm done airbrushing, I take it apart, and the parts towards the back end of the airbrush, like the nut that holds the needle in, the little kind of thing with the spring and all that stuff, and the trigger, all that stuff comes out, and then it's the main body of the airbrush and the nozzles, and those go into fluid after I've cleaned them a bit, and then they just stay in that fluid until the next time I use the airbrush. The other stuff, you don't lose it. That would suck. Um, you know, hold on to it in some fashion. But yeah, the other stuff I keep in fluid, so then I never have a clog because it never dries out because it's never dry. So um, works out real well for me. It has been for, uh, well, my current airbrush, both of my airbrushes. My current airbrush, would, uh, my the, lo the one I've had longest I've had for probably at least eight years, and it's been in fluid all that time except when I'm using it so and it hasn't rusted or anything like that's brass you know it's not gonna rust um, I bought some skinks and scions and going to make my first kit bashing with them I got any advice skinks and scions are you gonna like kit bash those two kits together I don't know a ton about the skink kit I don't know if those heads come off It'd be sort of fun to have like scion bodies with lizard heads that'd be sort of cool you got your reptilians coming at you. Um, I don't know if it would work the other way. I don't know that the scion heads would look very good on skinks. That's a good question. 
I uh, just started playing Warcry, and it's so fun. I, yeah, I like it too. I've been playing Soulbound lately. That's the RPG system, but weird world. Not yet understanding the world concept. Well, it's a Age of Sigmar, our role-playing game, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Keeping the airbrush worky bits wet is pro tip gold. Yeah, it just... Uh, actually, it was... Sam's brother, John, who taught me about that. Like, he was going to show... We were going to airbrush some stuff. I was over at his place in the garage years ago when I was first... This is back in 5th edition 40K when I first started. We were playing Combat Patrol, and we were working on some terrain. And so he goes over to grab his... He's like, I'll grab my airbrush. And he just goes over and grabs his jar off the shelf and just starts taking parts out of it. And uh, it was like, like, you keep it in water? He's like, yeah, if it never dries out, it can't ever get clogged. And I'm like, oh, all right, well, there you go. Worked out great. Um, sounds like nozzle is not tight enough. Oh, you don't want the you don't want to, you don't want a loose nozzle. That's no good. Uh, just got a Patriot 105 from Badger, I believe, is where the Patriot 105 comes from. Tried to zenith all the white ink and it leaked out the tip. Hmm. Yeah, that might not be tight enough. Or I, I think a big thing too is to almost never put. Never try to shoot straight down with your airbrush if you're gonna be trying to shoot straight down onto this model actually turn the model and then shoot like this like if you turn the airbrush like this stuff will fall out of it which you don't want so always you know tilt the you know you tilt the model to spray and do that or whatever you know it's easier frankly like when i show you that you want to spray down and maybe at like a 30 degree angle it's easier for me to show you that that way but when you actually do it you probably want to be doing it more like this and very frequently i'm not moving the airbrush i mean i'm moving like in circles with the airbrush but i'm moving the model to get that cone i'm not moving the airbrush to get that cone because it's kind of hard there's a hose hanging off of it you could spill you know that kind of jazz so um next level painting from the long war boys are good beginner intermediate and advanced air videos um how they monetize means parts are missing from tutorials since they cross platform with twitch hmm. yeah i i mean uh, um kenny uh boucher uh, from next level is is a amazing uh, airbrush uh, person uh did you and sam grow up together no um we met Oh, in the late 2000s, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because I was getting a tattoo at the tattoo parlor that was directly below my apartment when I lived downtown. And uh, I went in there and I knew the woman who owned the place uh, because she used to come into the bar that I used to bounce at. I was a bouncer for two and a half years. And so she used to come in there a bunch. So I kind of knew her, I knew her, her, her name and whatever and everything. And then, of course, she lived downstairs and whatever, uh, or she worked downstairs because it was her shop. Um, and then at some point, I think I did some logo design for her, like freelance and stuff like that and whatever. But I was going down to get a, a tattoo, and there was this uh, tall, lanky, long-haired guy who was also working there, and he was over at his station. And I noticed he had a bunch of miniatures, like on a little shelf, like next to his thing. And I was like looking at it as I was getting tattooed, and I'm like, is that a golden demon? And it was his first golden demon win. And so that's when I met Sam and we started talking. And um, and then I uh, had a friend who had uh, third edition Space Hulk and wanted to get it painted. And so I hooked him up with Sam and then Sam, he like paid, you know, Sam to paint his third edition Space Hulk. And, um, and yeah, so we, we've known each other ever since. Uh, would you recommend distilled water for the airbrush wet storage because of the lack of minerals in the water? I used to use um, airbrush, or I used to use distilled water for my airbrush. What I found was because the water's distilled, I would get weird. I don't know what. Something slightly fuzzy would start to appear in the water if I didn't change it out too frequently. And by too frequently, I mean, like, sometimes within, like, a month, I would get, like, a weird... It wasn't a mold. I don't know what it is. And as soon as I switched back to tap water, it just stopped happening. Because there's, like, chlorine and all kinds of crap in tap water. Now, the downside is, is if you let 
the the water level of your of your water let's say your airbrush is sitting in here here's the cup let's say and the water gets down to the point where it evaporates and gets down so that the cup is now sticking out of the water the minerals will sometimes collect a little bit as it evaporates along down the, the side of the cup and you'll get like a little line and you have to kind of rub it off or whatever and that's a bit of a pain so the answer is to either use distilled water because then there's no minerals in it but you get sometimes weird stuff going on inside there because there's not anything to stop that stuff from happening uh or you um or you, you you know then or you have to wipe off the stuff or just don't let the water level get below you know your cup or whatever so that that's yeah it's weird it's weird bouncer tattoos secret badass yeah uh I, yeah, I was a bouncer as a side job uh, for like two and a half years back in the 90s. Yeah. And uh, yeah, back in the 90s. And it was, um, I don't know, it was a, it was a bar that, uh, it was mostly a stoner bar. So I probably threw out, I don't know, two or three dozen people over my two and a half year career, but I never had to touch any of them. Like I just was just like, you got to go, you got to go, you know, and just... I'm big, so if I stand close to you and tell you you gotta go, and I don't have it, I don't respond to your conversation about why you don't gotta go. You, you, you're generally gonna go. Um, so yeah, I um, and I do have some. Well, I mean, I've got some tattoos, you know, and stuff here and there. I've got three, currently. Uh, would mentholated spirits be okay to clean airbrushes? Uh, is that anything like white spirits or mineral spirits? I don't know what the difference is. The only thing I've ever used to clean my airbrush other than Iowata airbrush cleaner or whatever squeezy airbrush cleaner bottle you can get online. Um, the only other thing I've used in, in water is um, I have used mineral spirits after shooting um, enamel wash. Uh, through my, I've got a, I've got two airbrushes. I've got an Iowata Eclipse, which is the slightly fancier one, and then I've got an Iowata Neo. And the Iowata Neo is the one that I've used for uh, enamel washes. So I'll spray enamel wash through there. And then as soon as I get done with that, the first thing I do is I throw some mineral spirits in there, and then spray that out, and then throw some normal airbrush cleaning stuff through there. Spray that out, and then water, and then it's fine. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I don't. Uh, I don't know the difference between mentholated spirits and white spirits and mineral spirits and uh, like vodka, you know. Um, uh, wet, stored, and liquid is how I store my airbrush. Yep. And the water, the 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 fluid in there is probably about, like I said, <clears throat> at least three quarters water, and then I squirt some of the airbrush cleaner in there as well, just for reasons. Um, let's see, Pouncer, yeah, I mean, it was, again, like I said, mostly, you know, I was, like, checking IDs and things like that, and telling people that they had to leave if they were too drunk or stuff like that, but that was about it, did that for two, like, yeah, I said two and a half years. Uncle Adam is big? How big? He's never struck me as a big guy. Uh, how tall are you? About, uh, six foot two, roughly? This head is massive. This is, it's bigger than a normal person in, in a lot of ways. It's, that's why I have to wear fezes because normal hats don't fit. I don't even have a normal hat here to show you. Uh, well, knit caps. My wife makes knit caps too, so that's good. Uh, that's very helpful. Any piercings? No piercing, no. Um, Uncle Adam, be deceptively tall on screen. Sitting down doesn't help. I've had people at, at conventions like walk up to me and say, oh, hey, I like your, and like, and then they'll be like, you're, taller than I expected. I mean, and Sam's taller than I am. Sam's like 6'4", I think. That was always my tactic when bouncing. Just tell people to do things and don't engage in any of their top. Yeah, you can't have a conversation. If you're, if, 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 if the bar, the lead bartender's like, that guy needs to go, then you're just like, you gotta go. You gotta go. And they'll be like, man, but I don't... You, just, you gotta go. You gotta go. Mentholated spirits have some nasties in them, stuff like petroleum distillates. IPA is less deadly when atomized. That's the thing, too, about all these other things. Um, like, I always wear, and this is going to be hard, I think, for doing my airbrush video is I, I don't know, like, 
because I'm, I, I always wear a respirator thing with the things on the side and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be, I think, hard to understand me potentially, which is going to be difficult. Uh, the part of Windex that you are after is the thing that lessens the surface tension of water. Hmm, all right. Uh, let's see. Windscreen, windscreen wiper fluid works well for me. Basically the same as Windex. I know Sam is a big fan of uh, using Windex to clean his airbrush and stuff like that, too. <clears throat> a shot glass is a great way to keep your airbrush ready. Tip down with cup submerged. Oily parts out. Hmm. Yeah, I've tried that. Um... Six foot two, camera makes you look shorter. Well, it's a, you're maybe watching this on your phone and then I'm only like that big. Um, but yeah. Also, I'm sitting down and you basically are just seeing me from here to here. So there's that too. I remember uh, we were at Gen Con years and years and years ago. It was still in Milwaukee. And uh, I was with a friend of mine and the woman who played Seven of Nine was like a guest or whatever because he used to have lots of guests at Gen, at Gen Con. I don't know if they still do or not. And you could like stand in line and pay to get an autograph or whatever. And, um, but she like walked by with some like, you know, security folks to go sit down and, and do her, her thing. And she like kind of walked right by us. And my friend Sean was like, well, she's a lot smaller than I thought, you know, when I see her on TV. And I was like, well, Sean, when you watch her on TV, she's the size of your TV and so is everybody else. So it's kind of difficult. Plus, here she is not filling a screen. She's in a giant trade show room and she's, you know, and he's like, yeah, I guess that is a good point. So, it, you know, per perspective is interesting in those situations. Six foot four bellowing towel for sales. So that's how you sold them. Well, it, it helps. Yeah, certainly. Um, maybe shoot the voice and then do it or shoot the video and then do a voiceover. Yeah, I, I could see that. And you wouldn't know. Like, I could be talking and then I could use those notes myself and you wouldn't. Well, you'd probably see my jaw moving a little bit. But yeah, it's potential. It's potential. You need a throat mic when you work with a respirator mask on. I don't even know what that is. Like a, like those things that they wear like in the uh, action films. If you're like a, you know, like a special forces dude. They, I don't I guess, maybe. I got kicked out of a bar once by a bouncer when I was totally sober. And I was not doing anything wrong as far as I could tell. And I asked him why. He said, just said, my boss said, you have to go. Yeah, maybe just didn't like the cut of your jib. I don't know. With us, it was generally you were doing something bad. There's like there was definitely something bad going on. Uh, let's see here. Jerry Ryan. Yep, that's her name. Yep, yep. One of these days I'll be adult size. Well, that's that's. I got to be honest. Like sometimes I think you know being smaller is you find more clothes. Well, at least in this area of the country, I think that. <clears throat> like a lot of people in Wisconsin, like just, I don't know if it's the, the German and Scandinavian and a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of folks that are taller here. So when you go into like a clothing place like Target and you're like, oh, this is a cool shirt. Oh, it's all gone in extra, extra large or that extra, extra large. It's usually gone in extra large. Like everything, like there's plenty of smalls left over <laughs> and there's plenty of mediums. And then there's like no extra larges and there might be a double extra large. But I luckily I, I I've, I don't wear, um, Double extra large anymore, thankfully. So there's that. Jerry Ryan's 5'8". That's pretty tall. Yeah, but at the time, like, because my friend Sean was, was Sean's like f six foot and I'm 6'2". But, you know, when you watch somebody on a screen, especially if you've got a large TV, you just assume that they're, you know, humongous and then whatever. That being said, also related to Star Wars and, and also the Adams family, there was the guy who was <sighs> Deanna Troy's mother's, like, manservant for lack of a better term i don't know so deanna troy was the she had the uh she was the well she wasn't psychic but you know what i mean uh she was an empath and then her mother would be on the show once in a great while and it was this tall dude who hung out with her he was also lurch in the movies uh the adams family movies he was also a guest at gen con back in the 90s uh one year and i walked by him now he's I don't know seven five or something crazy like that, but he was sitting down like signing autographs and stuff like that, and his head was like a piece of luggage. He was massive, just like humongous. And I just walked by, and it was like it was one of those things where you're like, 
now I feel like I'm a lot closer to you than I am because I'm like, you know, you kind of put everybody mentally into like a thing when you're like, oh, okay, well, everyone's about roughly the same height, you know. And then when somebody's way outside that, whether you're very small or very, you feel like you're now all of a sudden, like your brain tricks you and he's like, oh, you're a lot closer than you might think. And, uh, you're, but you're not. Um, so anyway, yeah. Yes, Mr. Hom, that guy. I don't know if he's still around anymore, but he was humongous, massive. Uh, let's see. Large and extra large can be hard to find in the Louisville area, too. Tons of smalls available, though. You know, you'd think that, like, big companies like that, and this is completely related to wargaming, totally. You would think that big companies like that would be like, okay, well, like, in the places of the country where people are generally smaller, we should send more smalls there, and the people, and then we'll take the extra larges that they're not going to use and send them over here to the, the big weird folks over here in Wisconsin or whatever. Um, so that would be a good idea. Let's see. Dutch. That guy's Dutch. Oh, he's also the Twin Peaks giant. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Head like a piece of luggage. Yeah, like it was, like seriously, like his head was like the size of my carry on. It was just massive, just huge. Um, but yeah, so let's see. What have I been doing lately? Uh, I've been, like I said, I've been painting a lot of resin 3D printed models. I've been working on a bunch of different demons. I was working yesterday on. If you watched the Friday video about Etsy, I showed a quick shot of a of a 3D printed model that I got along with those uh, texture rollers. And um, that guy is basically painted now. Like I shot him, well, that, that video or the clip, that the, the photo of him that I shot, I shot on Thursday night. I primed him Friday after the Twitch live stream. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, I also stream on Twitch, and you should check it out if you're interested in Twitch and watching me paint things live. Um, Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central, which means tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Central, which was after that show is when I primed him. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so he got primed on, f like I said, Friday, and then Saturday morning I started working on him. Uh, and also these three other little demon guys that I'm working on as well. And so I got to finish them up today. He's mostly done, but those guys are maybe halfway. And so I want to get them done and I gotta get some photos of them and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, um, and then I'm trying to figure, excuse me, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to paint tomorrow on Twitch actually too. Um, I have a Mutilex, Mutilith Vortex Beast. Pretty sure that's a word or a term. Uh, it's a chaos, big, monstery type of dude. Um, he is maybe a third painted, and he's been sitting around for a long time. So I could just decide, oh, I'll work on him, because he can technically be in Warcry as well. Um, and he's actually chaos and not death like the uh, the big uh, terror guys that I've been working on on Twitch. So I might use that. Uh, just because I don't know if I'm going to have time today to get anything else ready to go and prepped. So he would already be ready to go. And I've been wanting to work on him anyway. So I don't know. That might be what I do. Uh, otherwise, I might work on some terrain. Because I've got some terrain that's like basically kind of ready to start you know, having things happen to it. So we'll see. Um, but yeah. For airbrushing, any tips to practice help gauge distance from the model? Man, I do wish that there was like some sort of like laser sight. You know what I mean? Like I feel like my, and I don't know if this is just something in my head or whatever, but I feel like the airbrush that I use the most, which is the Iowa Eclipse, I feel like it's not shooting straight down the barrel. I feel like it goes a little bit to one side. Not a lot, but like there'll be times where like I should be hitting the head, but I feel like I'm hitting the shoulder. And I don't know if I'm just like not, you know, because you're not shooting it this way. You're not holding it this way. You're holding it from the side. And so I don't know if it's a perspective thing or what, but it's it's something. Uh, anyone doing name labels for their bases? Seen some cool 3D ones printed online. That'd be a great addition. Yeah, there was a company at that was going to be <clears throat> at Adepticon 2020 before it got canceled. And the name of the company starts with a V, and I cannot think of it now, and I feel bad about it. But they, you basically reach out to them and go, look, I've got 32 millimeter bases. These are my four names. They then make these cool like they model these like cool like around the base sort of things and then they you know they print them out and they mail them to you and then you can glue them to the front of your base so you have these neat little kind of like name plaques on your bases for your whoever your, your people are and stuff and they're really cool um but i've also seen now on i saw some of those on etsy as well i don't think they were as well sculpted necessarily as the ones that i'd seen from that vendor that was going to be a gen con 
something starts with a V uh, again, but um, they were they're very cool. And I would like definitely see doing something like that for Kill Team or like maybe even Warcry. Something where you're not, I mean, you could also do it for just like your, um, I don't know, like your, your HQ units maybe too to give them a cool name. I'll practice airbrushing on my cats. That'll be, I don't think that's a good idea at all. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be unhappy about it. Um, do you have a short list of favorite sellers on Etsy for 3D models? I don't. Um, honestly, that model that I showed on Friday was the first model that I've bought off of uh, Etsy. Other stuff I bought off of Etsy have been all kinds of different things. Um, but that the only reason I actually picked up that model was two, twofold. One was I bought a, a, these texture rollers and that particular seller, because I bought all those texture rollers from the same seller, that particular seller was like, well, if you hit this certain amount, then you get free shipping. So I was like, hmm, I don't want any more rollers. What else can this person be selling that I might be able to buy for to get me for, over the hump for free shipping? And then I saw that crazy, weird, rounded strawberry demon model or whatever, and I was like, ooh, I like that. That's pretty cool. So I added that on. Um, but other, that, that it was honestly during like the last couple, like maybe the last month that I started noticing that so much 3D printed stuff is on um, Etsy. And there's something I didn't talk about in the video, but... The, the model that I printed, if you looked at the listing, or that I didn't print it, that they printed for me, the model that I bought that was 3D printed, if you looked at the listing, it said licensed from, and then the name of the sculptor was, I think, Rocket Pig, either Rocket Pig Games or Rocket Pig Studio, something like that. And so it said licensed from. So a lot of these um, different sculptors or whatever, whether it's Titan Forge or Bastarium or Archvillain or any of these different folks out there, a lot of them will have a thing where they're like, hey, if you want to print this stuff and sell it to people, you can, but you have to pay us a licensing fee to do that. And from what I understand, there's also a, a decent amount of people on Etsy that aren't doing that. They're just like a Patreon supporter. And they're like, hey, cool, I get all these STLs. Now I'm going to sell, not the STLs, but models that I print. Technically, you either need permission or a license agreement to do that, you know, because otherwise it's the thing. And I don't completely understand it, but a bunch of people brought that up in the comments. And I guess I hadn't, I just, I knew that the thing I bought said licensed by. So I was like, okay, cool. But evidently there's a decent amount of stuff on Etsy that's not licensed. So something to keep in, in mind when you take a look at that. Mutilith Vortex Beast. Yes, that's the one. I want that model, the perfect edition centerpiece to my Chaos Soup Army at 80 models and growing. Fear my wrath. Yeah, like I said, I got that. Uh, I bought that guy. Oh man, I've had him for years and years and years. Last time I think I worked on him was 2015, 2016. I think that. I yeah, I think so. Check your airbrush nozzle tip. The tiniest defect can cause it to spare off to one side. Yeah, see, I've taken a look at that, and I doesn't. I don't see anything. That's why I think I, I think I'm just. It's an optical illusion. You know what I mean? What would you recommend for spraying GW Metallics? Uh, I mean, that's a lot of thinning you're probably going to have to do. Most GW Metallics. Now, if you can get the metallic in the airbrush, like they do make a line of airbrush paints, Games Workshop does. They're not something you can find at every store, but some stores do carry them. And then those are designed just to go straight into your airbrush. Uh, but a normal GW paint is not designed to go in your airbrush, unless it's like contrast or a wash, but... Their normal opaque paints are not designed to go in the airbrush. So you're going to have to thin them down. The more you thin them down, the more coats you might have to do. It's a whole thing. So, um, yeah, I would definitely try to see if they, and I don't know if they do or not, but if they make some of their normal metallics, iron breaker, lead belcher, whatever. I don't even know the colors that they use for metallic, the names they use for metallic colors these days over in Games Workshop land. Um, but, uh, yeah, that would be something to take a look at. See if they've got the airbrush equivalent of that that you could buy. Now, it's still in a pot, not a dropper bottle, so it's sort of a pain in the butt to get it into your airbrush, but whatever, that's their, that's their jam. Um, tell us again, which color shifting paints are the best to get? Was it the Turbo Dork set? I mean, those are the ones that I like. I like the Turbo Dork uh, color shifting paints. I have not used any of them from Green Stuff World. Because um, I can't. I, I've just never seen them anywhere. Um, 
I think Vallejo makes some now too, but I don't think I found them locally either. So I haven't used any of those. Did you try ultrasonic cleaning the airbrush? Yeah, that's where I keep my airbrushes in an ultrasonic cleaner. It keeps the fluid is in the ultrasonic cleaner. Yep. Um, have you ever tried an all-in-one airbrush and compressor looking for something compact and quiet? I keep seeing these ads on like Facebook and stuff for it's like an airbrush on top and then it sits on like a like just instead of a hose coming out, there's just like a big cylinder underneath it. It's all black. Um, I think that Blackjack Legacy did a video, like he bought that. I think he was probably also seeing that same ad repeatedly and was like, sure, let's give this a try. So I think he bought one. And I don't remember. I swear I started to watch it and then I don't, I think I had to stop for some reason. Like I had to go do something or I was, I don't remember what it was, but I didn't really get the overall gist of whether it was good or not. I, or maybe I just saw the thumbnail. I don't remember. Anyway, the point is, if you take a look at Blackjack Legacy on YouTube, I'm 98% sure he's got a video about that particular airbrush. Unless I'm confusing him with somebody else. But I think that that's a thing. So I don't know if it's good or not, but he would be able to tell you. Um, let's see here. GW Air and Vallejo Air paints are great for brush painting too. It's like having three thin paint. Oh yeah, like the Vallejo Metallic air colors are my go-to metallics for silver specifically um honestly i prefer uh, i prefer uh, pro acryl gold uh both the regular gold and the rich gold are spectacular but for silver though like honestly i think that the vallejo line is spectacular Who wouldn't want paints called Turbo Dork in their in their collection? And they're very nice people. Uh, you know, they're they're made here in the, the U.S. Uh, 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 out in California, I think, someplace. Um, but yeah, so they uh, they're nice people, and also, like I said, I really like their stuff. I've been really happy with it, both brushing it on, like I did on my Tyranids, and I did it on my those bug uh, wings on the big uh, Chaos uh, Puscoil Blight Lord. And I've also used it through the airbrush for my night haunts and something else. I airbrushed it through something else too, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. <clears throat> uh, how long can we stay angry at Green Stuff World for sicking YouTube on sword and steel over color shifting paints? I don't know. I don't... Uh, I... I I, I did not catch a lot of that whole drama because I don't really get into drama too much. But uh, I yeah, I my issue with Green Stuff World, it's not even an issue. It's just that I just like there's no stores that carry it around me. And I own some of their um, acrylic texture rollers for putting. They're not like the ones that I showed from Etsy. Those are for using on pink foam and they have a kind of deep cuts and they'll push deep into pink foam to make a cool texture like a brick wall or whatever like that. Um, but the uh, Green Stuff World rollers are shallower, but they're not designed really for pink foam. They're designed to put on green stuff, hence Green Stuff World, I assume. Uh, and then you put that on, your, on one of your bases, and then you make your own texture on your bases. I own a bunch of those, and the only reason is, is because I see them all the time at Adepticon and Nova Open. Maybe not Adepticon. Maybe it's Las Vegas Open and Nova Open? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I've seen them like actually at hand and I can pick them up and go, oh yeah, and then buy it and then take it home with me in my, in my luggage. Um, but it, I've never seen any of the paints in the wild that I can think of at any store uh, in the United States. And I think, again, they're a Spanish company like Vallejo, but they don't, I don't know that they get into distribution over here as easily. So, um, I've used Green Stuff World paints that I've noticed as they age on the model, the hue changes. Weird. Oh, huh, I've never noticed that. Is that coffee? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any colors that you find that you use up? Uh, I just recently had to rebuy Exile Blue from P3. Um, I, I've been using a lot of ivories. Uh, I've been using a lot of the olive flesh, uh, ivory and bright ivory, all from Monument. Uh, the light umber and dark umber I use all the time too. So when I replace they're bigger bottles. The Monument Pro Acryl paints are 22 milliliter bottles instead of um, 17 or 18. So they're a little bigger. But I will have to probably start replacing some soon, specifically those colors. Those are the, my main go-tos for nearly every project. I'm using those 
three different variations of basically kind of ivory and like those two different browns. I use them on everything. So update the cats are not enjoying being airbrushed. Well, I would expect not. Just the hissing, I would think. Cats don't like hissing. Uh, Noble Knight in Madison had some green stuff, world stuff. Hmm. I've never been there. I've never been to um, Green Stuff World. Or, I've never been to uh, Noble Knight. It's way in the southern part of the, the place. Uh, let's see here. Favorite coffee brand? Uh, I get, I don't know, Seattle's Best maybe? I don't know. It's relatively cheap. It's, it's, it's almost always on sale. That's the stuff that I buy from the coffee shop. Or uh, from the grocery store. Bellacore, nice new standard chaos leader or some kind of sub-faction leader in the making, do we think? I don't know. I saw the model. I like the new model better. Um, but yeah. How does how well does Templar Black contrast, Black Templar contrast is what it's called, uh, take other paints after using it on a weapon? Um, I have done dry brushing over the top of Black Templar contrast, and it takes it just fine. But admittedly, I am generally using... A softer brush for my um, uh, my my dry brushing because I'm usually usually using makeup brushes uh, of some sort. So those softer bristles help. If you've got a real scratchy kind of dry brush, um, which can work really well for some things, like if you're trying to make it look like metal scratching off uh, paint or scratching off like rust and stuff like that, then I will use a smaller bristly kind of scratchy kind of dry brush, generally from Games Workshop. Um, but for everything else, I'm usually using a softer uh, makeup brush, and I don't ever have any troubles with that. Um, I did these cultists for Zona Alpha. They are um, art, uh, Anvil Industry is the name of the company that makes them over in the UK, and they're resin models. And I used a bunch of them are holding AK-47s. And so I used a contrast paint on the black metal, basically, and then dry brushed a little bit of silver to make them look like a little worn and stuff like that, and it worked fine. So, yeah. No Sam Lens coffee. I haven't bought the Sam Lens coffee, no. Um, I uh, Yeah, Sam Lens is working with a coffee company of some flavor, or, well, flavor, some, some I don't know where they're based out of, maybe Canada, maybe? Uh, but, yeah, he's... Um, so there's a, it's not, I know it's not called Sam Lens Coffee. It's called Unchained or something like that. I remember he posted about it on, on Instagram a while back. But do you ever, have you ever used Vallejo varnishes either in the airbrush or brushed on? Um, I have used the matte varnish from Vallejo quite a bit. It's not great. It's not as flat as I would like for that. I've used it more for as an additive to other things, specifically white ink. To make it so that the white ink is not affected by the um, contrast paint if you decide to throw contrast paint over it later on if you're doing a Xenophil highlight. <clears throat> the Smart Jet airbrush compressor from Iowata is pretty good. Been using it for years and it's not loud. Tankless. Yeah, I've got a tankless airbrush compressor too, which is also quiet and has been working pretty well. Uh, knock on wood. It is a Sparmax, S P A R M A X. Maybe two X's? Not quite sure. It's a TC2000, which I don't even know if they make anymore. But I bought it from uh, Hob Hobby Lobby back in the day when you used to be able to use that 40% off coupon. Yeah, the, and they don't do that anymore, I don't think. I based an entire model with Black Templar. Can't remember which. Everything went on fine after. I Googled it. Couldn't find an answer, so I just had to try it. I have heard from some people that they feel that contrast paints are not particularly robust after they dry, meaning it's easier to rub off the contrast paint, it's easier to scrape off the contrast paint, it's easier to, you know, whatever. I generally try not to rub or scrape my models after they're painted, because I don't know that any paint is real robust, you know? Um, and it's another reason why you always want to varnish stuff, especially if you're gonna be gaming with it. If it's a display piece, different story, but if it's something you'd be gaming with, picking up, setting down, putting into a thing, taking it to a shop, taking it, whatever, then varnish is a good idea. Um, and I've found that uh, I haven't had any trouble, but I've, like I said, I swear someplace I heard that someone said, well, I don't think that the contrast paint is quite as robust. It doesn't, it's easier to rub off or whatever, but I haven't come across that. 8 a.m. here, so I must go to bed. Need to get my sleep before I go to work tonight. Well, absolutely, evil eyeball. I hope you have a good night. 
How does a can of spray paint compare to a bottle of airbrush paint? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, like, it depends on who you're buying it from. So, like, Games Workshop's rattle cans these days cost at least 20 bucks, And I know that, I swear to God, Retributor Gold is $30 for a can now, which is a lot. Um, airbrush primer, like, I will buy a bottle of airbrush primer. Well, I'm trying to think. What's the, I'm going to go look at Monument Hobbies and see how much their airbrush primer cost uh monument hobbies um come on so let's see here my internet's probably slow because i'm streaming <clears throat> i should have done this on my phone but yeah um paints primer so you get a, it's $14 for a 120 milliliter bottle. So a normal bottle of like, let's say Vallejo is I think 17 or 18 milliliters. So this is 120 milliliters. It's usually a good size bigger bottle like this and it costs 14 bucks. So that's half the price of a, of a, of a, of a rattle can of Retributor Gold and you're going to get a lot more like... When I paint a model, when I prime a model with um, any kind of airbrush primer, like a single model might take four or five drops of, of, of paint, you know? And so, yeah, you, that's another big benefit to airbrushing, in my opinion, is that you get, you don't use nearly as much paint. Now, for terrain, I still generally have a tendency to use rattle can. And the reason for that is because it's faster and also it sticks better, I think, to some degree, especially if it's plastic terrain. Um, if it's not plastic terrain, that doesn't matter as much. But also, uh, you know, that's just a larger, it just, it's just, it's a larger area. I don't feel like I'm wasting as much paint. Um, when I use a rattle can on miniatures, I feel like I'm wasting a lot of it because I'm not, I, it's going everywhere. Whereas with a with an airbrush, you can kind of really put it where you want to go. And there's not a lot of extra, you know, going all over the place. If you get a chance, check out the Mc, McCafe coffee. Outside of fancy stuff, I think it's the best generic coffee out there. I mean, we, I went through the drive through for uh, McDonald's yesterday for breakfast for my wife and I. Uh, I do like their coffee. It's fine. I'm not a big fancy um, coffee. I, I like coffee. I just I'm not fancy about it, I guess. McCafe light roast tastes just like the coffee from McDonald's. Well, it's the same stuff, isn't it? I mean, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Anyway, uh, just recently... Uh, da, 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 da. let's see here sword and steel has such interesting accent yeah i don't know where she's from tt combat is releasing a large range of spray paints in the uk oh that'll be kind of interesting huh hmm. um what do you use for objectives and flags and did you have a place where you like to get objectives and flags uh the Right now, the objectives that I've been using for quite some time actually were given to me by my friend Mac, uh, a.k.a. Mac the Maker. Uh, uh, you can find him, I think, on YouTube and just the regular internet and stuff like that. And he's a 3D printing guy. And um, he gave me these little, they're like maybe 32 millimeter size. They look like a normal GW base, roughly. Like I said, maybe 32 millimeter. Except that they have like a Roman numeral one, and then there's a two and a three and a four, up to six. And they're like raised. And it was a 3D print job that he did. And then I just um, sprayed him a whole bunch with a bunch of different primers to kind of... Because it's not resin, but a filament. So there's like a little bit of rigidness, but not bad. He, he did a really good job on them. Like, you know, there's a lot... In filament 3D printers versus resin printers, there's a lot more dialing in that you do uh, with resin, with filament. Whereas resin's kind of like... I don't want to say plug and play, but it's it's more towards that than the filament printers can be. And so... But yeah, they were really nice prints. And so I... Sprayed some sort of thicker primer on them to kind of help fill in a little, you know, because you get those little kind of lines a little bit sometimes in 3D printing stuff from filament. And, um, yeah, and then I painted them. Um, they're, like, kind of gray, and then the letters are raised in, like, a gold metallic. I've been using those for uh, quite some time. And um, uh, that's what I generally stick with, yeah. I also have some that I made that are not numbered, and they're just, like, different little pieces of, like, artifacts and treasure that sometimes I'll use, but those I think are on 25s, so. Let's see here. Rustolium Clear Matte is a big can for nine bucks on Amazon. I haven't tried that stuff. 
But that's the thing, too. So, like I said, on one end of the spectrum, you've got Games Workshop rattle cans, which can be between $20 and $30, which is crazy. Uh, on the other hand, if you're just looking for a decent rattle can primer, like black or maybe gray, potentially even white, um, go to your local auto parts store. Go to your auto zones, your... O'Reilly, like, I don't know, depends on what kind of auto parts stores you have in your local area, and look for um, sandable auto primer, is what they will call it generally. And I think by sandable, they means that you can sand it? I don't know. Anyway, but sandable auto primer, like the color, the the, the, the brand that I like the best uh, for my local auto parts stores is a color called Duplicolor, but Duplicolor sandable auto primer makes a really, really, really nice, smooth, um, finish on miniatures and terrain and things like that and maybe you're paying five six bucks a can so that's a good deal less um yeah i always thought adam was canadian wisconsin so very close if it wasn't for lake superior we'd be right on the border there well i mean the state our state would be bordering uh, canada but there's a big old honking lake in the way so other than that um Uncle Adam do a follow-up this morning to his new Kill Team video? I did not. I don't know exactly what there is to follow up. Did it come out? It must have come out. Yeah, I saw, I remember on Friday seeing my local shop posted a picture on, on uh, Facebook uh, saying that they were going to be able to start selling it on Saturday. Um, I roast my own coffee in my hot air popcorn. Huh, interesting. I, uh... Mike, uh, there's a coffee, there's a coffee shop right near my studio that does their own roasting in house, um, so uh, I could get that stuff if I was uh, in that you know direction. Wisconsin is the Florida of Canada. I don't know if that's the right thing. Um, can you recommend a, a crackle paste other than GW? Tried Vallejo, but it's terrible. The only stuff I ever use is GW stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't tried any of the other stuff. Uh, I don't know that I've tried Vallejo either, so I don't know. The thing about it is that you have to, from what I understand, is you have to put it on pretty thick to make it work. If you just put it on real thin, it doesn't crackle. You actually have to kind of glob it on there, and then it takes like a long time to dry, but when the globs start to dry, they're the parts that crackle the most. The parts that you put on thin barely crackle at all. So um, that's what I understand. Have you used Army Painter mixing balls? Are they safe in Vallejo paints? I've been using them... I guess I don't know if I've used them in Vallejo, but I'm assuming they are. They're stainless steel. But that's I've been using the Army Painter mixing balls for a long time. Uh, yeah. Ash from Gorilla Miniatures mentioned that rust varnish some time ago, and I've been using it since to good effect. Um, yeah, I mean, like the thing is, is that most of those varnishes do a good job of the varnish part. It's just that if you want them to be really, really, really flat matte... That's the hard part. That's that's the, um, and and it's difficult to get a good varnish that protects and also is very very flat and and not very reflective. That's kind of a hard thing to do. Uh, let's see, there are a surprising number of Canadian hobby YouTubers. Yeah. yeah. Um. Want to ask, how do you keep your organic materials that you use for basing from rotting or getting moldy? Uh, I don't use any. Well, that's not true. I use cork, but cork is kind of already dried by nature, I think. I don't know. I don't generally use, like, twigs and sticks and stuff like that. Um, I know that people who do very frequently will have, like, uh, they'll put a bunch of tinfoil down on a cookie sheet, sprinkle a bunch of that stuff that they got out of the yard onto the cookie sheet, and then put it in the oven and set it on, I don't know what temperature, low temperature, uh, uh, and leave it in there for a while, and that can help dry it out, so then you're less likely to get rot. I would do a Google search for that, but I, I've never done that, so I don't have the answer, unfortunately. Um, for crackle paint, gloss varnish the surface before applying to get a better crackle. I've found either that or just at least paint the surface. Like, I got to be honest, the first time I used crackle paint, I just put it directly onto the plastic base, and it crackled fine, but also looking at it real hard would make it fall off. So there was nothing for it to stick to. So then, ever since then, I've painted the base just like black primer and or whatever color. Maybe I want, like, 
maybe I want it to be red underneath because it's like lava, know, whatever. So you paint it and then you put the crackle stuff on there and then the crackle stuff has something to stick to a little better. But yeah, if you don't, if you just put crackle directly over plastic, like seriously, like a breeze will just cause it to like flutter away, which is not necessarily what you want. Um, now that I got monumental to the table, I'm pretty keen to paint the minis. They're very nice sculpts. Interesting. I don't know what the monumental is. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Goobertown Brent's most recent video, but from the tests he did, it seems like it's not very much worth it to do a gloss then matte, and you could just do a matte. Yeah, I've never done gloss and then matte. I, well, I've done gloss varnishes for two things. Sometimes I will use a brush and paint on gloss varnish after I've done the matte varnish, but only in certain spots, like if I want something to look wet. Like if you've got your a Nurgle guy and you've got a big sore here on your shoulder, I want that to look wet. I throw a little gloss, you know, with a brush in there, and then boom, it always looks wet. So that's helpful. Um, otherwise, sometimes you do a gloss varnish on a model while you're still working on it to basically kind of lock everything down, and then you can do like certain types of washes over the top of it, and they will flow a little better and whatever, and then you can you know, kind of go from there. But I do very rarely do I do that kind of stuff. So. Um, let's see here. I think the recommended temperature is 160 degrees to kill bacteria. All right, well, there you go. I use a brush on varnish by Golden. They have a matte and a gloss, which can be used for fun effects. Nice. Uh, best ground cover, get four or five different colors of model railroad flock. Mix them all together. It looks more realistic than a single color. Yeah, um, who was I just looking at? I think it was... Army Painter, they're like little tufts, you know, the little tufts that you get to stick little little grass tufts. It's not not the you know, it's not like the sprinkle grass stuff. Uh, it's more like they're you get a piece of paper and it's all the little tufts glued to it, and you kind of peel it off and stick it on your thing. Um, I like theirs a lot lately because they are not all one color. Like there's a little bit more contrast. Like they've got like the ones that I most recently bought from my local uh, shop. Uh, are mostly like a kind of a dead grass sort of like tan, but then there's some dark stuff in it too, all within the same tuft, which I think is kind of nice. It kind of gives a more visual interest to it. You put shade paint over the cracked paint, then seal it a bit. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. Um, let's see. Paper Cuts is a great channel. I've not heard of them. Any tips for clearing resin uh, printed supports? I have trouble with them. <clears throat> um, I don't I've, I've never had trouble clearing the supports my trouble is usually then that sometimes there's like these little sort of divots left on the model where like the support was touching on the resin so for those of you who don't know uh, 3D printing very frequently needs to be supported during the process and sometimes because like if the printer especially if it's like a, if it's the filament kind if like you know your model comes up to a point and then something starts to stick out the printer can't just print out into open air so let's say it's you know you you get like a piece of terrain that's like you've gotten about this high so far on the printer and it's been going back and forth and printing and printing and now there's like an archway or like a broken archway that comes off well it can't just start printing out into midair because crap will fall and it's no good so supporting what that is is they build these little kind of structures the software builds these little structures to hold stuff up and so it's printing those structures as it's going. And when it gets time to start doing it, the scaffolding's already there. It just prints on top of the scaffolding. And resin printers do that as well, even though they're printing everything kind of upside down. But still, um, most of that scaffolding stuff is designed in such a way that when it's time, when you're done and everything's cured and dry and everything, you can usually just kind of grab onto it and just kind of pull it off, almost like it's perforated. Um, but sometimes in the perforation process of where those little pieces of scaffolding touch the model, there sometimes is a tiny little divot. Like I noticed some on this model that I got that I was working on yesterday. I got from Etsy, and you don't notice it on most of the model because the model's pretty organic and bumpy and got stuff going on, so you don't notice that. But there's these rocks that he's kind of standing on. On the underside of one of the rocks, you can see a bunch of like divots from where that stuff kind of pulled off. But it's on the underside of a rock, so I don't really care that much. But sanding is usually what you do there to kind of help fix that stuff. So. Gloss varnish helps washes flow easier than 
when dry. Yeah, I know, because having the smooth surface, it allows the flow to flow around more. Crab Battle. That's a fun name. Hey, Uncle Adam, love your stuff. Sorry if this is redundant, but do you think it would be feasible to set up for airbrushing in a living room or other multi-purpose space? Thanks. Yeah, um, I think that, honestly, the best way to do it, if you're going to go in that route, is to just get to spend a little bit of money, but go to, like, Amazon or, or someplace like that. Amazon's probably one of the most popular as far as this particular thing, but you can get an airbrush hood uh, for about 100 bucks, and it will come... And it is a kit, and it has a fan in it, and a filter, and a hose, and then you can put that hose out the window, or you could, I've even seen people take that hose, and basically, they'll take like a waste paper basket, put the hose into the waste paper basket, and then fill the waste paper basket with um, crumpled up like paper towel, uh, because then what you're doing, so the thing about airbrush is that there's usually not a smell like you have with rattle can. When the, the smell that you get from rattle can is mostly the propellant. It's the chemical that's inside there that when you push that thing down, it expands and it pushes out the stuff or whatever, right? Well, with an airbrush, if you've got a compressor, the propellant is just the air that's already in your room. It's just taking it and compressing it, and then it wants to blow out of the brush when you press the valve. So, um, yeah, there's basically no smell to airbrushing, but there is paint dust, because you're basically atomizing the paint and it's kind of floating around. Any stuff that doesn't stick to the model can technically float around the room, which is why you wear a respirator to keep the dead dust from going into your lungs, which you don't want. Um, so there's that. But uh, the other thing is, is that you can just get weird dust all over the place. Like it's not going to, by the time it lands on any piece of furniture or your end tables or your television or whatever, it will be dry. So it won't paint your stuff, but it will still be dusty. So the concept of using one of those filters, one of those hoods, is it's got a fan in it that's sucking the air in. So as you're spraying, any overspray goes and gets stuck into the filter. And anything that's even smaller than the filter gets blown through the hose. And then if you blow it into, like I said, like a waste paper basket or something like that with a bunch of paper towel in there, it'll just land in the paper towel and probably not get moved around too much. Ideally, you blow that fan out the window, but it's, again, not that big of a deal. The filter will catch a good portion of it, generally. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's the thing about airbrush that's nice. Now, there are airbrushes technically where you can buy a can of propellant, screw it on there, and spray it, and then that will probably have a sub-bit of a smell. But it might also just be compressed air in a can sometimes. Or like that that air to use to like, you know, blow all the, the dust and, and uh, boogers and whatever out of your uh, keyboard. You know, that kind of stuff. But that doesn't really have a smell per se. So anyway. Uh, I've heard you regularly speak about having no interest in elves, elves or Eldar type models. What are your stand on dwarfs? I don't stand on dwarfs. I mean, they're short, but I don't stand on them. That, that would be mean. Um, uh, dwarves. I, I, uh, yeah, they're fine. I mean, I don't know that I own any. Well, that's not true. I think I own some Forge Father, Forge Father models from Mantic, Warpath, Slash, Dead Zone. Dead Zone? Yeah, Dead Zone. Uh, but I don't think I've built them. I think that they came with something that I bought, but I haven't built any of them yet. Yeah, I'm not, like, into the, um, I, I don't know. I, the Caradon Overlords, I'm interested in the, um, I want to, I, I own the, um, the little warband for Night Vault, Shadespire, one of the beast grave i don't know it's for one of those uh warhammer underworld games they did come out with just a set that was just carried on overlords and i do kind of want to paint them um i think they're kind of cool though uh, greetings from delray beach florida how are you doing the amazon ones are passable but there's a really good sheet metal one made here in the u.s forget the name when I first got into airbrushing, I started going online to look at airbrush hoods, and they were all like four hundred dollars. And I was like, Ugh. and then now you can get the ones from Amazon that are made out of like that corrugated plastic, I think, and they kind of fold up a bit, and they're like a hundred bucks. And frequently, they even come with like LED lighting. Um, and I'm not like if I was a professional airbrusher, I would probably want to spend the money on the fancy like metal one. But for a person who's going to use it once in a while, and not even like you know. I may use it on the weekly, but I generally like I airbrush at the beginning of the project, and I don't airbrush until everything else is done, and I want to throw some varnish on it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with sometimes the cheaper stuff like that. It, it depends. 
Uh, would you use poster putty or something similar to protect an area during dry brushing or airbrushing? Oh yeah, I do that all the time. If I'm painting anything in sub-assemblies, I don't want to get paint on the spots where I'm going to eventually glue those two parts together. Let's say there's a shield, right? He's got a shield, whatever. And uh, we want the shield to stay off while you're painting because it's a pain in the butt to get underneath the shield for paint, or let's say. So um, very frequently, then I will take that shield off before I, you know, I just, I just won't glue it on. And then when it's time to prime, I'll throw a little bit of poster putty on where the shield sticks to the arm and where on the back of the shield, you know, is going to be glued to the And then that way I'm fine. Um, some people don't do that. And they just go back later and scrape the paint off. But I'm just like, I'll throw some poster putty on there. It'll be cool. Uh, have you seen MWM guys coffee crackle paste? I don't think I know what that is. No, just dried out coffee grounds and craft paint. I tried it and now I swear by it. Super cheap. Huh? No. Um, working on a group of forge fathers at the moment. They're gorgeous models, but many parts. It's slow going. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the earlier, especially some of the, a lot of the earlier um, Mantic stuff can be a lot of parts. That's true. Does Pache, or is it Pache, suck nowadays? They used to be like the airbrush. I don't know. Like I, The first airbrush I ever owned, my parents bought it for me when I was in high school because I started getting into, um, like, I was getting into drawing more and more, and I got into, um, like, when, I think they called it marker rendering. Like, it was before there was computer graphics and stuff like that. People would draw cool, like, cars and things like that. And they would either use airbrushes or they would use special, fancy, expensive markers to do, like, you know, drawings and things like that. And um, so I was kind of getting into that a little bit for a while. And then my parents, like, I asked for an airbrush. My parents got me an inexpensive airbrush. It was a Pache. And it was a single action. It wasn't a dual action. Um, and I used it some and it was hard to kind of and it was also really loud it was like a little tiny compressor that i don't know it was weird it was a uh, it was inexpensive but there you go but i don't know if they've as a company do expensive stuff anymore and i think that they're maybe still aimed a little bit more towards illustration a little bit less toward a little bit less towards modeling and i don't know a lot about them but i know that they're still technically out there i think that my local hobby town USA I think that might be the only type of airbrush that they sell eh, they might have an Iowa water neo there now too I think veer men are so cool looking a rat species that has embraced tack terrifying yeah there's a lot of people that say that they wish the GW would would move the scaven into the 40k I think that'd be kind of cool too uh, it's around 250 bucks has an exponentially better blower motor might be too loud though if you're doing it in the living room. I have the Amazon one, but it doesn't really grab all the overspray. Yeah, I mean that's understandable. I have a friend at my local game store who is a dwarf. He plays dwarves. New people don't know how to, know how to react. I'm pretty sure he does it to make people awkward. Yeah, that's I can understand that. Midwinter mi oh midwinter minis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, crushed eggshells in PVA plaster filler can produce a fantastic cracked earth effect. More useful for dioramas than gaming. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like these days, my kind of go-to is either still the glue with um, the CA glue with some um, um, baking soda uh, sprinkled on it, or I've just been using a lot of. Uh, there's a color called from GW called Armageddon Dust. I think is the texture paint. And I don't care about the color because I put it on before I prime, so I'm going to repaint it anyway. But I just like the actual physical texture of it. I've been doing a lot of my models lately using that stuff, um, and it's it works pretty well. I mean, I'm still using some kitty litter and some pieces of cork and different things like that. And it depends on what I'm what I'm doing. If I'm painting stuff for Kill Team, then I'm not using any texture at all. I'm just sprinkling some uh, kitty litter onto the base because the base has got a super fine little micro texture on it, which looks kind of like asphalt. And I'm always painting my Kill Team models to look like they're standing in an urban environment. So I just use the texture that's already on the base as the base texture. And then I just sprinkle some little pieces of um, kitty litter down into some CA glue that looks like little pieces of like crumbled concrete and like stuff like that. And maybe I'll throw a brick in there or similar little piece of whatever. And then when I paint the entire base, I paint basically everything gray, do some dry brushing of like a lighter gray, all that kind of stuff. And then you get a, a decent um, uh, kind of urban rubble base. Space plus Skaven equals Spaven. There you go. I can understand that. 
Uh, what do you use for airbrush cleaner? I generally use uh, Iowata airbrush cleaner. Uh, I get it on Amazon in 16 ounce bottles. They're, good. they're a little sque they're squeezy bottles. They're like tall. I think it's either 16 ounce, 16 or 32 ounce, but I forget. I think it's the 16s. Uh, using a dual action VL old one. Don't know if I could, if I get anything out of upgrading. Probably not skilled enough to honestly. I mean honestly. That's the thing. Like one of the things that I want to do is, like I said, I, I bought that real cheap airbrush from Amazon, and I want to try that out and see what I get. I don't, especially if you're basically just using it for priming, varnishing, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, zenithal highlight, that kind of stuff. I don't know that you need a particularly expensive airbrush. Certainly, um, if you're going to get into, you know, a lot of detailing with your airbrush and stuff like that, then it might be not a bad idea. But yeah. Uh, hey, Adam, missed the chat this time, but I've recently started collecting vintage Kis Kislev minis to paint. Kind of hard to find minis at reasonable prices. Super fun to paint up. Well, that's kind of cool. Fun. Uh, is the zombie dragon finished? Uh, probably not going to be on stream anymore. He's yeah, close to finished. I still need to finish the base. I generally don't paint the bases on Twitch because it's kind of boring. Um, but uh, the rest of him is basically done. I need to touch up some stuff on the backsides of his wings. Uh, I fixed his ears. And um, yeah, I did a little bit of that yesterday. Um, what else do I need to do? I know there's something else I need to do on him besides the base. Uh, there's just a couple of little touch-ups here and there. But otherwise, he's basically done, yeah. Uh, I've used builder's sand and screenings, fine gravel of crushed limestone, as groundwork, fixed in place with white glue for 20 years. Same bag of sand. Nice. There you go. Just found an Osprey book that's called Black Ops. Do you know anything about it? Um, I swear I may own it. Because I, that, that sounds familiar. I don't remember who wrote it, but it does sound familiar. Um, lately, like, I'm really looking forward to... to, to um, Stargrave, but lately my main Osprey itch is being scratched by uh, Zona Alpha, so. Mortian Tank has amazing Cyber Rat models. Hmm, I've not heard of them. Rubble equals drywall compound uh, dried in a cookie sheet, smashed up. Oh, yeah. I've seen people use um, like dental plaster, and you pour it into a um, like a paper a paper plate, one of those, or like a you know maybe like a foam plate, the, the full blown paper plate that's that everything soaks into. You don't want that, but like either like a waxed paper plate or a foam, you know, like disposable like picnic plate. You just pour a bunch of like the dental plaster in there, and just a real thin layer of it. Wait for it to dry, and then break it apart, and then you got nice pieces of rubble as well. Uh, question, are there rules for using Eldar Aspect Warriors in Kill Team? I don't know. Um, they might be in the Elites book, mm, uh, but I don't know, yeah. Uh, my Amazon Airbrush constantly clogged. My Iowa is amazing in the comparison. Well, that'll be interesting for me to check out, yeah. Um, I make boulders and rubble with extra sculpt mold when I've mixed too much. Yeah, I mean, finding ways to, like, use leftover stuff that you didn't mean to make so much of is always a good idea. Can you get by with one of those square makeup airbrush compressors for priming and varnish? I don't know. I've never had any um, experience with those. I know Iowata for a while used to make one that looked like that. It was a... I think I want to say they called it a ninja jet or something weird like that, but I think it was it was it was more expensive, so it was probably slightly higher end in some fashion. But it was like a small little square one. Mine's roundish, but it's still also tankless. Um, is there a reason for a certain airbrush brand like H and S, Eyewater, Badger? I got the impression the quality is more or less on the same level. It would stick to a brand as easiest to get. Um, I mean, there's something to be said for 
I don't know, a lot of different things. Um, I know that sometimes the hose couplings can be different. So like a, a Badger hose won't work on an Iowata brush or vice, or vice versa, stuff like that. So there's benefits sometimes to sticking with the same line sometimes in that. Um, I mean, it's, it's personal preference, frankly, um, I think. Uh, Zingbo says the Dire Avengers are in the Kill Team Core manual. Howling Banshees and Striking Scorpions are in Elite. The other aspects are not in Kill Team. There you go. Kitty litter sounds smart. Do you recommend having a cat? Well, we have four, so I it, it's not for everybody. That one just walked away. But yeah, uh, I like cats. Have you tried battery powered airbrush? Uh, there are some very cheap ones. Maybe that would be nice to try out. Airbrushing would be nice trying reviewing. Um, we were just talking about that before. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Blackjack Legacy that, that did a review of one of those handheld. It's all compressor and airbrush all in one package, and I think it's battery powered. I think so. You might want to check uh, Blackjack Legacy, that, that channel out. The Iowa to Square Ninja Jet one is no bueno. Uh, can't control the PSI and is always on. I think mine is, well, I have a switch, but when you turn it on, it's on. Like, there's no, well, that's not true. What it does is it, like, if you're not doing anything, it'll just sit there and be quiet. And as soon as you start spraying, then it goes, bzzit, bzzit, bzzit. And if you don't do anything for a while, sometimes it'll just go bzzit by itself. But other than that, uh, yeah, I guess there's that. Can you use rubbing alcohol diluted with water to clean your airbrush? You can. I don't know if it's bad. <laughs> uh, I mainly just use airbrush cleaner, uh, the stuff that I buy from Amazon. Uh, Iowata makes it. and uh, But yeah, I don't know much about rubbing alcohol and whether it's good or bad for the little rubber thingies on the inside of the airbrush sometimes. Uh, Diesel health update. Uh, he's okay. Yeah, he's been not... Like, he's not wanted to eat his wet food lately too much, but he keeps eating the dry food, so it's not like he's got no appetite. He's just being a jerk a little bit. Um, yeah, the, the the prescription food, he's like, no, 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 I don't want that. I'll just eat this other stuff. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, um, and it's, as it's been getting warmer, he's been wanting to go outside more, so, like, you know, you go outside with him and walk around a little bit, and he sniffs things and whatnot, and then comes back in the house. We don't, like, let him go outside by himself, because he will get hit by a car, probably. Um, so it's it used to be, you put a little harness on Diesel, and he's one of the cats, by the way. Uh, he's our oldest cat. And we would let him walk around and stuff like that, and walk around on the leash. And now we've just gotten to the point where, like, he's not going to go anywhere. He just wants to walk around. But if you just let him go by himself he would eventually end up in somebody else's yard so that's why you you know go around with him but so far the he's got um he's got uh intestinal cancer diesel does we've he's about 15 and uh so we're giving him chemo and stuff like that and he's doing okay so we'll see um pro tip cheap airbrushes have rough needles you can smooth them with brasso metal polish it stops many my clogging issues interesting so a cheap airbrush is a rough needle, which causes more clogging. But if you s polish it with Brasso, then it stops the clogging issues. Interesting. Hmm. Jonathan says, we have four cats as well. I can feel your pain. You love them, but there are days. Yeah, oh yeah. There was a, what was it? Friday morning. Um, him and D Diesel and uh, Maggie, who's the one that likes to sing sometimes with the fleecy parade. Uh, both of them came and decided to wake us up at like quarter to seven and... My wife was not going to work on that. She was taking the day off, so she was hoping to sleep in. That didn't work out. Uh, and I was, I yeah, I don't work on Fridays. I do the Twitch stream at ten, but I don't have to get up crazy early. And so yeah, but they were both like, nope, gotta get up, to, gotta get up early. Um, if you haven't yet try out using the quick detach knobs for Iowa airbrush. I have one to switch between my Iowa for priming my uh, harder and steam bag for fine detail. Hmm, interesting, yeah. Um, let's see. Good to hear his quality of life is still good. Oh yeah, he seems to be doing okay. He had like a thing with his eye for a while where like there's a membrane. You know, like have you ever seen like a lizard 
like pictures of or video of lizards and they can like blink without blinking they have like an external it's called a nictitating membrane and it's a like a eyelid between their eyelid and their eye it's usually kind of clear or at least translucent and they can use it to sort of clean off their eyeball so they'll just sort of like blink but their eyes won't close cats have that too it's just that they generally are directly behind their eyelid they can't like move them independently like lizards can but they are just there well diesel on his on left eye i think it it was just starting to come up and like cover part of his eye and he'd be like looking over it and it was frankly gross looking and also we figured that's not right so we took him to the vet and they're like oh yeah that could be an ear infection all right i guess so and, what, and so the eardrops which he was a super big fan of totally um and gave it to him gave him eardrops for like i don't know two weeks and now it's gone away so it's uh, evidently it was an ear infection that we didn't know he had in the past when he's had an ear infection he will like dig at his ear a lot um and he wasn't doing that but evidently he did have an ear infection and now it's gone away so that's good uh let me see here i oddly enough just bought my first airbrush well congratulations timothy um let's see here Nick, is it nictating i thought it was nictitating no well, either way it's a membrane and it's yeah it's in his it's in his eye um i have five cats pro tip if someone wants to give you their female cat make sure she's not pregnant before you say yes oh yeah no that's problematic i don't want that cats love eardrops been there yeah 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 my uh my wife uh she is the um the uh medicine giver to the cats uh but technically diesel's the only one that needs it at this point but um in general yeah and she's also the nail clipper too which is important um so yeah but yeah i um so i think i don't know there's probably a decent amount of things if there's any other kind of um subjects um from airbrush stuff like i said i hope to so pretty soon i want to make some videos um Again, like I said, my airbrush room is so small that I couldn't figure out a good way to put tripods in there to set things up. And now I've gotten some adjustable arms that I can clamp. So it's an, it's, it, I think it's an old coal bin that I'm doing my airbrushing in. And so I've got these clamps that I can clamp to the studs that are, they kind of use to make the walls. And so, you know, because it's, uh, anyway, so I can clamp to the walls. Because if I clamp to the table, if I bump the table, then the cameras will wiggle, which I don't want. So I'm going to clamp, I think, one either to the ceiling or something like that. And the other one will clamp to this wall. Because the wall on this side of me when I'm airbrushing is cinder block. Because it's the foundation of the house. So I'll be able to do that. And then, and using these smaller cameras, like I said, th this one, I'll be using the Sony A6400 for the main camera. It's got very, very good focus. Uh, kind of like the one that I use for Twitch, although that one's an A5100. Uh, and then this one's the ZV-1. And this is a good one that will be pointing at my face. And I can also then pick up a product and be like, hey, check this out. And it will focus very quickly on it. And then I can move away and it will go back to my face quickly. So that just showed up on Friday. And I want to read the instructions just to know a little bit more about it as well. i got to try to do that maybe tonight. So, yeah. Took your advice about helping people find the hobby and happy to report my brother-in-law is not one of us. Nice. Good work. I, uh, good work there, definitely. Uh, probably your ear. Sounds like me. Hip hurts. It's probably my back. Yeah, well, the, the ear, ear, nose, and throat, like they're all like connected, I guess. So, and I guess eyes are also involved in that. I don't know. I don't know why I said ear, nose, and throat when there's no eyes in there. Um, my wife is the nail clipper in our house. I don't want my face scratched off. Uh, yeah, my wife has just got a, a way about it. I mean, one of them, Carlson, he's the scaredy cat. He is the hardest. Um, but he's not, he doesn't fight it. He just runs and hides a lot. So you have to sort of sneak up on him, like find him in the bathroom and then close the door. And as soon as you close the door, he's like, oh no, he, he knows what's going to happen. Uh, but otherwise that, yeah. Um... Let's see here. Much love to Diesel. Absolutely, yeah. Any suggestions for brushes to clean out clogs? Cheap ones from Amazon. Meh. Um, I don't know about a good, like, again, like I said, I don't ever get clogs because I always keep my airbrush, I store it in fluid, so it's always wet, so it never dries out and gets clogged. I know they sell those little tiny little, like, wire brushes that you can get in there and try to clean stuff out with. Um... I don't know if this is a good answer, but I did watch a video with uh, Lester Bursley, 
who used to be a, a pretty big on you know wargaming YouTube stuff back in the day. He used to make a lot of videos. He doesn't do it as much anymore. But uh, he, he, he's an amazing airbrusher. And he, in one of his videos, I know he talked about how he goes through and he cleans his airbrushes from, t- from time to time with um, uh, nail polish remover. And, and uh, basically, because he's like, it will destroy any, uh, you know, um, acrylic paint or whatever. Like, it will definitely get it out of there. So that's something to look at. I, it's, I mean, that stuff is basically acetone to some degree from what I understand. So it's not, you know, it's super flammable. So don't be smoking while you're doing it or whatever. Um, so be a little bit careful with it. But if you've got a really nasty clog, I've always heard that the that, uh, nail polish remover is, can be the way to go. So uh, let's see here. I spray into a little Caesars pizza box on my kitchen table. Well, there you go. See ya. I have to say the compressor for the brush is probably 80% of the important thing. It needs to have a tank to fill with air. See, I mine doesn't have a tank. Uh, never has. Well, I think my first compressor, my first compressor did have a tank, but it was a like $60 compressor from the hardware store. It was bright red and it was for like pumping up tires and stuff like that. And um, it had a, a a tank. I think it was a two gallon tank. And then so it would be completely silent and you'd be spraying and spraying and spraying. And then you would like get a lot of the air or most of the air out of the tank. And then the compressor would kick in and it was incredibly loud. The compressor that I have now, like I said, I think it's called a Sparmax TC200 or 2000. 2000, I think. That one doesn't have a tank. So when I'm spraying, it's making the noise. It's like, and when I stop, it stops. So it doesn't have to have a tank. Um, and I, it works out pretty well for me. Interdental brushes are great for cleaning nozzles. Whoa, there you go. Um, I think I have my method for painting dark angels with the airbrush pretty much figured out. Though I need to go faster with the goblin green. The last two looked like salamanders. Oh, go easier with the goblin green. Yeah, that's the that's the hard part to some degree with any kind of painting, whether it's dry brushing or anything like that. Those types of techniques where you're building up color over time, whether it's airbrush makeup brush you know whatever out the dry brush you, you you too little is always better than too much because if it's too little you can just put a little bit more into it if it's too much you can't kind of go backwards there's no control z so um yeah definitely have you already tried using try to use effect colors with the airbrush like spider serum from green stuff i have not no i've not used any of that kind of stuff the only stuff that i fired through my airbrush other than regular opaque paints uh are some washes and contrast paints, which you do to make almost like a filter, and that works pretty well. Um, and then, of course, like um, the color shifting uh, metallic paints from Turbo Dork, I've also used those as well, and they've worked out quite nicely as well. I use those mainly for my night haunts. So, yeah. So, with the advent of the vaccine, are there plans for TMX? So for those of you who don't know, TMX is the Tabletop Minions Expo, and it is a tiny little convention that I hold here in Wisconsin. Uh, I've held it three times, I think, in the past. Um, Did not have it in 2020, obviously. Um, Still not sure if it's going to happen 2021. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I should probably reach out to the... Because I hold it at the university here in town, and uh, it's real small. It's... um, I think last, uh, 2019, we had like 70 people. It's a very, very small little fun convention. Uh, people come and play miniature games. You know, people basically you come and play demos. Uh, there's no tournaments or anything like that. Um, but uh, my hope is to um, get, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to the people at the college and see if they are doing events or not. Uh, in June, because that's the plan, but I don't know. We'll see. Otherwise, it'll be maybe virtual again, and then hopefully 2022 will be back to normal. Uh, that would be great. It'd be, it'd be fun to look forward to that, I think, honestly. My setup is currently a box fan facing the wall with an AC uh, air conditioner filter taped to the back. Ain't much, but it works. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly, that's that's to some degree kind of what, uh, like, those other kind of filters, those the hoods that you buy, you know, that's kind of the same thing a little bit. Um, I don't often airbrush because of the hassle result ratio is too. I mean, again, like I said, I find that if I'm keeping the airbrush in fluid, then there's very little hassle. It's basically put it together, uh, attach it to the hose, 
spray out any of the water that's still left in there. Um, throw a little bit of, you know, a couple of drops of paint or whatever in there. Spray the thing I need to spray. If I need to twitch, switch colors, it's a pretty quick process. I just squirt some of the airbrush cleaner in there. Um, I use a, I actually use an old bottle of airbrush cleaner, which is empty, and I spray the excess through into that bottle. And then eventually once in a while I dump out the bottle. But that's just what I do to kind of clean out the brush. And then I just squirt some water into there as well after I get done with the airbrush cleaner. And then I can put in a new color and it's pretty quick. Um, yeah. I'm nervous about thinning airbrush primer in case it doesn't adhere as well. I don't know about adherence, but I do know that if you thin airbrush primer, you're going to probably have to put on a couple coats. Uh, whereas I generally don't thin the airbrush primer and then I don't have to worry about it. I put on one coat. Yeah, well, sometimes it's two, but even then still, it's it's only in certain spots. Um, but yeah, I've been using, um, like I said, lately my, my go-to favorite has been um, Proacryl airbrush primer, which can be used also on a regular brush as well. It doesn't have to be just airbrush primer. They just call it Proacryl primer, and I get it from you know, Monument Hobbies, who makes it, and uh, I like it a lot. But also a Vallejo primers, I, they're, they're, they call it surface primer, is what they call it, but it's the airbrush primer, and I've been using that for a long time. I like it a lot. Can you explain why using a null oil results in different when you airbrush on metallics over hand brushing? I find I lose much more shiny from the metal color when I airbrush. When you fire uh, a wash or a glaze or contrast paint through an airbrush, you fundamentally change the way that it works because you are atomizing it and it's basically drying instantly when it hits the model. Uh, it becomes more of what they call a filter. You're used to putting on, let's say, contrast paint and you glob it on there and it kind of moves into the recesses and the crevices and it kind of pulls away from the raised parts and it moves around a little bit and stuff like that with um when you spray that stuff through an airbrush it lands and it sticks and it does not move around it does not you, if you if you fire any of those types of things washes glazes uh contrast paints through an airbrush they will not do the thing that they're designed to do getting into the crevices getting darker blah, all that stuff they just won't they will work differently than a normal opaque paint because a normal opaque paint will just instantly cover stuff this is transparent paint so you're still going to get the color from underneath a little bit and it's very difficult to without really just going to town and just saturating the area, it's very difficult to not have the color underneath still shining through. Um, so that's when you paint something and now you want to darken something, like rather than getting a darker color of that or mixing a new color of it, you can literally just take a contrast paint that's like, you know, uh, like a dark color, like a brown or a black or something like that. Or you can even take a wash and spray it on, again, like if it was a piece of terrain and you want the building to get darker as it gets closer to the ground because the mud kicks up in the rain and stuff like that. Just look at most buildings. You'll notice that they have a tendency to get a bit darker as they get towards the ground. If you want that real subtle kind of darkness down there, you spray a filter over it. You don't spray an opaque paint over it. So that's why it acts very differently. Um, and then as far as the shininess and stuff like that, that's probably related to the same thing. It's not acting the same way. It's not moving around the way that washes and contrasts and even glazes move around before they settle and dry. They're hitting the surface and staying. Um, so yeah. What PSI do you usually run your compressor at? Uh, I generally stick between 15 and 20 PSI, somewhere in there. I think. I don't really change it too much. Um, which is your favorite red for airbrush? I don't know. I have a Vallejo Game Air Red. I can't think of what it's called. Maybe Pure Red? Something like that. But I use a Vallejo you know, airbrush paint uh, for that generally. I tend to pile up some airbrush projects and then spend a random day busting them out. I mean, I don't usually spend that long, but I do. Some, I sometimes do that too. I'll end up having like, uh, I mean, every once in a while, yeah, you go paint one model because it's something you're working on or something you need or whatever. And that's fine. I do that from time to time. But sometimes I, I rarely ever work on just one model. I'm frequently working on a war band, a squad, something like that. So then I, I build all those, like I've got these nine or ten clan rats right now that I've still need to texture their bases but when it's time to get them going I'm I'll take them all in there and work on priming them all at once um, and then kind of go from there so
Uh, I like putting Vallejo Earth Texture through the airbrush. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Or that, that sounds bad. I don't think that would work. I would think that the Vallejo Earth Texture would get stuck. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I feel like a savage. I run my compressor at 30 PSI. Then again, I only use mine for priming and single color base coats. Yeah, I mean, that's probably fine too. I don't know a ton about it, honestly. I just know that I'd read a bunch of things or watched a couple of videos and people were like, oh yeah, about 20-ish or whatever. And I was like, okay. So that's just worked for me. But I think someone mentioned in here earlier that they're running at higher like 50 and it totally depends on what you're doing. Uh, Battletech question. I don't really know anything about Battletech. I haven't played in years and years and years. So sorry about that. Um, let's see here. I got a Patriot 105 and a decent compressor to get started, but I haven't figured out how to prime properly yet. I got this to prime in winter and more in the future. Any advice? Um, just get yourself an airbrush primer that you like. Um, like I said, I've been a big fan of the Pro Acryl uh, airbrush primer um, lately, and also I've been a big fan of Monument or sorry uh, Vallejo's airbrush primer. They call it Surface Primer for some reason. Um, but yeah, I've used those for years. Uh, I know another big brand is uh, Steinal Res, which is from Badger. Uh, but find an airbrush primer you like, and you just spray it through and make sure to get all the nooks and crannies, generally. You know, you got your model, and you're holding on to it either with your hand, or you've got like some sort of, like you stuck it to a pill bottle with some poster putty or whatever, but get up underneath, you know, all, you know, up in the armpits and all those different places, and uh, make sure you cover everything, because it just helps with your priming. Uh, let's see here. Have you ever tried golden airbrush paints? I like their range. I have some goldish or golden airbrush medium, but I've never tried any of their paints. No. Hmm. All right. Well, it is 11 a.m. over in my neck of the woods, so I want to thank everybody for coming by. Uh, I appreciate the ideas and the questions and stuff like that about airbrush stuff. So I'm going to try to, like I said, I'll go through this video later on and like basically just copy and paste like questions and things like that, and hopefully come up with some, with some new airbrush content that I want to be able to put into the channel. I want to do a new series about airbrush stuff because uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about it, and I want to be able to help people out um, so to, so that they can you know enjoy their airbrushing and get more models primed and get more models painted, speed it up a little bit, do some uh, you know xenothal highlighting, and, and go to town from there. All right, well, um, have a good day, and if you're interested, again, I'm on Twitch tomorrow night from 7 p.m. Central until uh, probably about 10 p.m. Central. And then, of course, Fridays is uh, 10 a.m. Central to about 1 p.m. Central. And um, I'm going to be painting something, and like I always do. So uh, I want to thank you all folks again for coming by and hanging out. And um, we'll see you the next time. And, um, yeah, another two weeks at least still here. But otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.